yeah, definitely interested to see how it's going to play out. I do fear a little bit for OG's tempo going into this. Uh, there was Goblack Cottle on that list as well. <laughs> 22 wins. Oh, wow. Re remember Goblack back in the day? Goblack. Uh, I love that guy. He's I don't think tall. I've ever put him on Cottle, you know? He's like Treant and stuff like that. Were... First time I ever met him, he was leaning over me, towering over me. And he, I was in Ukraine uh, at the Cybersports Arena. And he just leaned over me and he's like, you play techies. And I'm like, oh God, I'm going to get beat up. <laughs> and, and he's like, I'm Goblack. I'm like, oh, thank God. He's like, I love techies. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was real concerned for a moment there. But, Sigh uh, of relief. Yeah, that was, that was well over, uh, that was probably over a decade ago. But uh, Call the style out of security guys to come over. And like, <laughs> Help. I was, I was just in a game and suddenly this, this huge presence over my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Game one, best of three. We're in the upper bracket for ESL one Bangkok. OG against Gaming Gladiators. And Waga, how important are the lanes for OG in this? Is this a game where if things get out of control, they, the, the, the like losses snowball? Can Gaming Gladiators accelerate quickly? Do OG rely on a timing? I would say that OG, they need at least nine to have a good start so that they can let him make moves across the map. And Nine is very good at playing his Quaswex Invoker. He knows mm -hmm. how to look for openings and you know find a weak spot in the opponents. Uh, but his early game is going to be important. I don't think Invoker is very rune dependent compared to some spirit heroes. So I, I don't know necessarily that you need to control runes, but you need to get him a good start either by ganking, getting some kills with him, <laughs> bottom. This is always funny. If you told me like a few years ago that oh yeah we're gonna have people blocking the opponent's creep wave <laughs> like this, you know. Imagine if someone told you that like five years ago, I'm, like, what? I was literally having an argument in Discord with people about how... So, someone said that people were like not creative back in the day. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was talking about how people hid in the trees as offlaners and you know, nobody really went to go and drag creeps and mess up with equilibrium. People were jungling, people were stacking camps at level one, minute six, stuff like that. The game was just so much harder back then, you know. Yes, people have become, uh, I guess, a bit more creative. There's more, you know, coaching, intelligence put into the game. But the, I don't just Dota 1 and early Dota 2 were just so much harder. Slower heroes, creeps felt stronger, the map felt wider and bigger, I don't know. There's all these little things that made life difficult. And if you don't know the tricks, you can't do them. Yeah, it's definitely true, though, that a lot of, like, things become norm. Like, things that now are common tech, you know, we didn't see that much of before. And so uh, how didn't they do that? It just wasn't, <laughs> it just wasn't a known thing. Yeah. Sometimes for good reason, and sometimes just, uh, you know, nobody really invented the wheel yet. Mid lane, a lot of HP trading going on. Nine did a good job securing last hits using his abilities, both the Tornado and the Cold Snap securing some CS for him. Um, and the Void Spirit doing, doing all right last hit wise, but trying to pressure the Invoker. He will get his bottle shortly. Might have to go and get the Water Runes before it comes, though. Yeah, not he a, not a massive deal. he bought a lot of stats, so didn't prioritize getting the bottle at minute two. Um, buying a circlet, uh, you know, universal heroes, they want all the stats oh, to free. He looks pretty dead here. Dead to Watson's gyrocopter. They did a lot of, yeah, they've got a big wave coming in for Whisper, so at least a little victory there for the Visage, but yeah, Ari's Visage, uh, Ari's Magnus is dying to gyrocopter. Not a good sight. Yeah, it's that learning curve coming in, the level two power spike of an ogre. Having two points ignite and one point in fire blast, very hard to fight against on level two. That's nasty. Well, here comes Quinn's bottle. Yeah, swap out all the little branches and stats and stuff, get that efficiency. There's still water runes available, so <laughs> even right. though he didn't get it super early, it doesn't really matter because the runes are both available. Uh, Nine probably should contest the bottom one at least after the CS. He wants to go in and. Going for it. Get some EMP, possibly. Side lanes, though. Um, Medusa, off to a pretty good start in last hits. Not too bothered by this uh, Terror Blade for now. Offlane Terror Blade, huh? Yeah. Have we seen the, these offlane broods? Offlane whatever it is from uh, some of these guys like Ace and Amar playing carry from a position three. What offlane is really the... Oh. He's dragged under tower. That's a good one from Ari. Yeah, caught him. Watson doing whatever damage he can here to Whisper, but Whisper's going to be very happy with that, you know, kill happening as well. He's already getting himself uh, experience on the Visage. 
Not gonna have a repeat of what happened to uh, Zero uh, Tenacity earlier. So far, last hits across the board looking amazing for OG. And primarily, this uh, Watson Gyrocopter has not had an easy time CSing. They keep shockwaving and just nuking him, just throwing out whatever damage they can. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. Nine last hits. When he's constantly like chasing Ari, who's <laughs> running around, skewering away, being a bit of a pest, but very good early laning stage from OG. All yeah. top. Another board in their cores. Nice swing as well, coming from Magnus going for the uh, water in there, so they prevent the Void Spirit getting a refill. Gonna stay thirsty for a little bit longer. And so this, this offlane Terrorblade, he kind of just plays... Like normal item build for Terrorblade, right? Like you might slot a pipe in there as maybe the weird one, but apart from that, it's you know, BKB Mantis Guardy stuff like that. Yeah, it's quite common. You you might see Mantis styles, and he could go drums as well. It's another pretty common item. Um, but the power is usually in that he doesn't need to go hard into the support build um, or like offlane build. Um, but I already see that he has the pipe queued up and playing as the Visage and. Visage Phoenix, I completely respect that. Yeah, fair amount of team fight there. He's not like an aura bot. He's not an underlord. He's no, not it's, gonna not, go... it's not going to go pipe and Vlad's and AC or Reeves. something. No. Yeah. He just with power treads alone, TB does auto attack really hard. Uh, so it's still similar to carry TB and damage output. And is uh, obviously one of the big reasons. Pretty solid against these Lunar Shadow Fiend Medusas with that reflection. Create an illusion of them. Turn the damage back on them. Kind of curious if we'll start seeing like Darkseer and stuff like that again. Yeah, I mean, we have SD and we have TB. So yeah, you get more of the illusion heroes in here. The Darkseer. Used to be one of the big ones. But even heroes, like, even heroes like Luna, they don't rely that much on their Agi nowadays. It's like Kanda, you know. So, yeah, true. Uh, illusions aren't that strong because of it. Oh, Medusa having a bit of a manner burnt. He's, he's licking his lips right now on Ogre. He, he wants this kill on Medusa. They saw him coming. Observer ward on that twin gate. He sees the Ogre arriving from the northern side, and it's going to watch Watson coming in, but it might be too little too late. 23 Savage, 19 Wand, pops it, has a Mango to boot, and now Tofu, the one that gets turned on here, as OG bring a, a number of heroes to defend their Medusa, kill off the Rubik. Ari's not going to be able to catch up to anyone else, but good good reactions and a very solid early game from OG with a greedy lineup. Matters a lot. I love Watson just going through the gate, looking at the fight like, nope, and then going through the gate again. That's 150 mana for a little sightseeing tour to the enemy safe lane. All he decides is that, nope, I'm going to go and farm instead. Meanwhile, Celery, being an ogre. Getting pushed and pulled around by the Magnus a bit. Oh, get oh, the last yes. hit with the death toll. Extra gold. Ding, 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 ding. A bit of bonus money for Whisper. Ari being... Not Ari. Nine. I see the parry in Nine's name and my <laughs> brain just says what it sees. Nine getting poked a little bit. As they do bring a couple of heroes mid, but not too bothered. As X Nova will stack up Ancients, get the Wisdom Rune. And Ace will do a similar thing on the left-hand side of the map. Yeah, Wisdoms get claimed one for one, so no discrepancy there. And the rotation down to bottom lane from Quinn has been spotted by this observer. So I'm not really going to connect to anything. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that move. Very classic gaming gladiators, right? Back when they had Duraccio, they would do that even like a minute four, minute five move through the twin gate and try to activate their carry as quickly as possible. Trying to do a similar thing here with Watson's gyrocopter. Not paying off. OG felt it coming. Already had the preemptive ward. And Quinn felt that EMP as well. Nine burning away a lot of his mana there. He pretty much needs the next power rune now. Spawning in 10 seconds. Already have Magnus controlling the bottom one. He's going to go top and contests. T Tornado is on cooldown. He can't really secure this rune. Invis Void Spirit is a spooky thing. Let's see if he can actually use it. He's got to go back to base to regen, but might... I don't know, he's going to have to TP to lane deep. He's never going to use that, is he? Never mind. <laughs> Goes Invis to walk back to base. 
yeah a little bit awkward for him he didn't really have enough resources to do anything there um so back to base he's looking if he can find a kill somewhere maybe going bottom finding a kill on that visage could have been big before he gets level six he's just about to hit it he's uh he's sat in base for a while thinking about where to teleport to but in the end gonna go back to mid of course this is one of the big things about medusa as well it's a hero that's very hard to gank in lane so when he's looking for that TP out on Void Spear, like, hmm, can I go to enemy safe lane? Well, it's a Medusa. You can try, <laughs> but you need, like, several thousand points of damage to bring down a Medusa, it feels like. Five heroes. Yeah, even this early in the game. She has Magic Stick, she has Mango. And stay clear some stacks. Get some more of these neutral items going. Oh, amazing to get to Shovel when you have a mid-hero with Bottle. Yeah. Shovel is uh, basically infinite resources. Well, slow and steady these first 10 minutes. Three kills for OG. Slight net worth lead. But the action comes top onto the Phoenix with a Terrorblade Metamorphosis. Celery and Watson there grouping around Ace to get a kill and push this tier one tower a bit. Yeah, this time the, the move is going to work out for a Gyrocopter. He's going to stay up here as well. Probably going to make a permanent home for himself as the bottom tower is going down to the Visage right now. And 23 Savage being run at here. Damage is coming, but not enough lockdown to stop him. Can't cancel the TP. And that's a pretty nice EMP with a tornado out of nine. That's gonna that's gonna put G Game Gladiators off the map for a bit. Like Tofu's out of resources, Quinn's looking a bit sad. Yeah, EMP is one of those real slow down spells. It just takes away the the breath from the opponent and makes sure that they have to recover for a little bit. Sort of winding them. And meanwhile, Medusa, yeah, she did have to TP out, but she gets back top lane pretty quickly, and she will be the stronger one going up against the Gyrocopter. Uh, bit of a brawl mid. Yeah, Quinn dancing in and out, knowing that the lockdown is lacking, with Magnus still sat at level 5. No supernova for X Nova either, so he'll just die to a fire blast out of the level 6 Ogre. No Celery's cracked his ultimate. Yeah, very nice. He, uh... Did already have it though, because he's level uh, level five, right? Oh, he got the yeah, yeah, yeah. the learning curve. <laughs> Boy, isn't it learns fast. That he's level six, then, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he gets more points, more points, and everything is always good. But yeah, always weird. He has an earlier power spike now. It's such like a locked thing in my head. Level six equals ulti. Yeah, six. It's always mark. one of those weird things like Meepo and Invoker. You have to learn the the workarounds for them. Now Ogre's another one. Took took me a long time as well for uh, the ulti used to be on level eleven, and then they made it level twelve. And I was like, what? Yeah. It just didn't ring right in my head. It's like, what? That, that's just wrong. <laughs> Still screws me up to this day. So TPS now moved down bottom. Is closing in on his pipe. He's pushing out that lane. Meanwhile, we see the rest of the squad ganking here, looking for Exnova again before he gets to level 6. Popped again. He is not the first one today that we see struggling to get level 6. 12 minutes in, still just 5 flat. Didn't need to get That's this boy some safe farming. That's like the cores on both teams are doing very well for themselves. Everyone's farming, everyone's having a happy time. And then I guess the supports, the fact there's not been much fighting and not many kills going around. Have not been too involved. And how, yeah, look at the Phoenix. Phoenix has to come and <laughs> leech some experience from the stacks from 23 Savage as he farms in that Ancients area. Yeah, he's he's helping. He's slowing the attack speed of the creep camp. He's paying his uh, paying his rent for this. Yeah, but uh, definitely needs the experience from these uh, Ancient creeps. Medusa only really wants the gold. Levels are nice, but she is a very item driven uh, hero. And uh, TB sieging up on mid now together with the rest of the squad. Bloodlust is there as well. Well, this is where you start to get into this kind of bulldozer moment where gaming gladiators, they are just systematically going from tier one to tier one, bloodlusting up, playing as you know, four or five and shoving objectives. At, at what, you know, the question is going to be at what point does OG put up resistance? When does that brick wall try and stop the bulldozer? I think they need to hit a few power spikes. They need more levels on the Phoenix still. Yes, you have your ulti, but ideally you want level four even on your fire spirits, more attack slow. Um, you want Blink Dagger on Magnus, who yeah, is saving up for it. it. Um, but 
Yeah, they have these great teamfight spells, but I still think they need more items. Oh, is Nine going for an Orchid on his Invoker? I think he is. Ah, okay, he's going for Orchid, so a bit different item build than we usually see. This is more classic. Of course, very good to have against the Terra Blade without Manta Style. Offlane TB with that uh, pipe. Very good to have an Orchid to try and silence him before he gets Thunder off. Yeah, that was good. Or just Void Spirit, but Void Spirit is going for Manta Rush, so I don't think Quinn is going to be too bothered. There might be a couple of minutes where it's like, ah, nasty, but I will have a way around it. Man, I still can't believe reverse reverse polarity is a thing, honestly. <laughs> RRP. So RRP. To push people away from the egg. Defend oh, yeah. next he, over. That's true. He is playing RRP. Yeah, I didn't notice that he took it. What a chad. RRP. I, I wouldn't be uh, surprised, though, from uh, Ari. You know, he he's always an exciting player to watch. I've played a lot of RRP. There's potential, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a copium believer. RRP is good. I'm not saying it's bad, you know. That's not my viewpoint. It's just I can't believe it's a thing they thought. <laughs> you know, like oh, let's add this to the game. That would never have crossed my mind. Yeah. The thing is, the the one selling point of this is that it's huge AOE. It's absolutely enormous compared to regular uh, RP because mm. it's 700 AOE. Um, which is uh, quite quite different, but you use it more as a deterring factor. So he's going to be there to protect the egg and to maybe disjoint a go on the Medusa. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It's been a quiet one across the board. I mean, usually this visage kind of getting off the ground now and making action happen, but Whisper is the one being run at by Gaming Gladiators. He's tanky though, 17 one charges with his Vanguard tanking through all the damage. Whisper staying alive, but finally dies to Quinn. Supernova is going to land and they turn on the Terror Blade, the silence and the stun, catching out Ace and killing him off. Offlaner for Offlaner on the doorstep of OG's base. And as Quinn, he's gonna, nah, just going to race away. Just going to walk away and be fine here. Nice kill for them, but I still think OG are happy to put up the defense here, hold their tower, and force gaming gladiators to concede and run away. Medusa even protecting her stack, so she gets the Ancients. Yeah, just a matter of de-warding the ancient spot now. Radiant Vision's up there, but OG are already pinging it. And they, they didn't spend, like, a massive amount of stuff. Supernova, Stone Gaze. They oh, didn't did, spend oh, the did RRP. He was holding it. I was looking if he was going to use it on Terrorblade, as the Sunder was potentially going to come out, but Cold Snap was enough to prevent him from getting that out. Again, though, I think Gaming Gladiators are a team that have no real downtime. They don't have the big teamfight spells, but they also don't rely on cooldowns. So they're hunting. Find Ari. Yeah, they're constantly on the map, right? They're across the river, playing on the dire side, looking for picks and getting them. Yeah. Starting to build this lead up little by little. TB, easy last hit there with a the reflection coming in. Just <laughs> kill participation. <laughs> he did uh, yeah, all the damage on zone, definitely. 88 damage at the end. Good stuff. Good spot. Well, at least a bit of room for OG to carve out that bottom part of the map, but they're playing under Radiant Vision. Game Gladiators know exactly where they are, and looks like Watson's going to signal that fact as the gyrocopter looked like he looked like he was heading over to Ancients to continue farming. But with this Diffusal Falcon Blade build, you know he didn't rush into that Crystalis mm -hmm. Aghanim Scepter. It feels like he wants to stay involved, keep on fighting. Yeah, it's definitely more of a fighting build. Uh, it's not terrible for farming either, but he wants to pressure Medusa now and try and get some fights going. Ideally, his timing is when he gets Aghanim Scepter, then he's quite strong. Um, but this is not the super ramped up farming speed that you could have if he had gone for a different build. So ideally, he wants to take some action. At the same time, OG... They're they are playing such a methodical game. It's not very active in the terms of looking for uh, pickoffs or looking for moves. But they're just out there building their power spikes, working on the butterfly for Medusa. Blink Dagger's coming out now for the Magnus. They're getting the pieces assembled, Gareth. Yeah, they're playing tug of war with their minds. <laughs> just a slow war of attrition they're back and forth. No one giving up any ground. You defend your side. Don't let the enemy take control of yours i feel like there's something to be said about that and the invoker having an orchid though because the orchid invoker feels like you want to fight you want tempo otherwise 
maybe you would have wanted to scale as well and play this slow game, go mm. for Midas even, or you know, either Witchblade or something else, Witchblade Hurricane Pike. The Orchid is it... not finding a lot of action right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what, he got them kill on TB bot, but I, I guess it's this kind of ability to play reactively. So if if Gaming Gladiators play aggressively, he has that option to be like, oh, I can join the fight, I can sneak in behind, find this guy. Yeah, not the... It's the same as the gyrocopter argument, right? It's not the most efficient item to do what they're doing right now, but they oh. have the... Oh, hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he oh, missed. Tofu's got a blink. Yeah. <laughs> Tofu with a quick fingers there. Good reaction oh, to the that. blink RP. He didn't get to steal it, though. Gonna be happy just to blink away. I don't know if, if he saw if the steals RP. It, does he get reverse reverse polarity as well? Yeah, I think so. But okay. he didn't see the RP being used, I think, because it was in Fog of War after he blinked uh, behind the tree line. So, I don't think he knows what happened there. I don't think Ari knows what happened there either. <laughs> there was a Rubik here, and now there's not. Yeah, it disappeared. He thought he RP'd him into a different dimension or something. Yeah, into the nether realm. Meanwhile, well, this gives an opportunity. To this Roche is just falling super quickly. Bloodlust and essentially two carries hitting. And this is the thing as well. Shard on TB is the big reason why TB can be played plus three. Shard is just overtuned as hell on Terrorblade. It's nowhere close to balanced. 30 second duration, 100 attack speed, 100 movement speed, 20 HP regen. Like, it's so good. Yeah, that's some wild stuff. Yeah, it is one of those things that wasn't used at all until it got overbuffed, and now I think it's just in illegal territory. It's way too much value. Nine slips away from Quinn. They both bump heads into each other. Watson, Celery, and Tofu all smoked up in behind the Void Spirit. Nine in a good spot to break the smoke if they come that way, but they've diverted paths and are heading in towards 23 Savage now. Oh, here we They're go. They're up the They're high in. ground and they see the Medusa. Right on to Savage with this mana burnout, the Diffusal Blade. They've dropped that mana pool low. The damage is coming thick and fast, and that Supernova Sunray is not enough to save them. They're going to lose the egg here as they just whack it down. OG lose two, and it's going to be a third as Nine's going to hit the ground. A double kill for Watson. Big here for Gaming Gladiators off the back of the Aegis to go get three kills, take control of the map. And now, I mean, the ball is firmly in their court. You know, I, I usually talk about in Dota, it's very good to have a draft that aims to be in the driver's seat, dictate how the game is going. You know, you don't want to be in the back seat and not have any any authority over how this is going to go. They're not even the back seat, man. They're in the trailer. Like, this, <laughs> this draft from OG is playing so slow. <laughs> I'm not even sure they're in the vehicle anywhere. They've got a bicycle attached to the back of the car, and they've got a kid's seat on the bicycle. <laughs> and they're sat, <laughs> sat in the little booster seat that the kids sit on. Yeah, something like that is going on, but they have to start making moves. This, You can't just sit around because eventually Gaming Gladiator is going to start scaling way too much. Yeah, this, this Aegis is a scary factor. Watson, very, very annoying to handle right now with the two lives. And, you know, OG did well in lane stage. They've done well these first 20 minutes to kind of play through the greedy draft, get to their primary items, but it, it is make or break time kind of now to use those items. You know, you've spent this time to get there, invested your energy, your efforts to get to a point where maybe you feel comfortable, but you know, Ari being under a sentry war definitely doesn't help. Uh, he, he's got smoke, so he's fine. You're he's, right. Uh, he's just looking right now. Looks similar to being invis, but he's looking for... A chance to catch something. I don't know if he wants to spend RRP here on the gyrocopter since he has the Aegis. I was like, why is no one else smoked? Why is it just... I thought Ari had picked up an Invis rune or something. Yeah, I think he intentionally wanted to, like, solo smoke and yeah. not make it look like there's a smoke coming and find that surprise surprise grab. Still, though, that's one smoke down. Just classic blind play-by-play -play stuff, you know? <laughs> they do have a Medusa going for them on OG, though. All things said, you know, they, they're playing slow and it's not really them controlling how the game is shaping out. But Medusa is ahead in farm by 2,000 ahead of the Gyro. Um, it's just her counterparts are hurting a bit from this being such a passive game. Death Toll Visage is similar to Bounty Hunter. It wants to have kills happen. It's, you know, what, what the entire facet is built around. Tormentor slowly being taken here. Visage still has that, like, Invis Ags business, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah.
That's his so aim. We could, Silent yeah, so as if, the grave. So if we get a little bit later, we could see this kind of, you know, split pushy visage being very annoying and playing the map wide. We, we I might. I don't know if OG can play wide when they want to team fight as five. Yeah. He's not really opted to go into that build yet, though, so it would have to be a bit down the road. Because for now, he's just going Crimson Guard and going for the, the Shard and the Bongo Boots next. So he's all about trying to buff up and protect his teammates. Stay alive. And meanwhile, yeah. it looks like Gaming Gladiators is just saying, okay, how much value can we squeeze out of our map? Farm the Ancients, run around, Rubik farming jungle. And Tofu is building his next time. He's like, I got Blink, but I guess I'll farm a Force Staff too. It's very much you know, drawing the line in the sand, right? You're on a, on a desert island stuck here with Game and Glad here as an OG. Don't have much room to maneuver. Their side of the island doesn't have any coconut trees or any fresh water. Yeah, their side of the island is also like 80% of the island. So at some point, OG are going to start getting a little bit envious. Thirsty. Uh, they want more. More farming grounds. They need help ASAP. These tier twos. I mean, this is the last one. Not dead just yet. Game of Gladiator is coming back to play under their vision for a second. As OGR swinging in from the left hand side. Ari? There's Ari. Reverse, reverse polarity onto the gyrocopter with a sunstrike and Watson pretty low. BKB popped, no Aegis in hand. Now he's dead to 23, 23 Savage. Ace running back has Sunder available if he needs to turn and try and save his own life. Probably going to have to here, but he gets stunned up on his way out. Oh, the route doesn't quite land. Shockwave pulling him back and he sunders the ogre just to slip away. So gyro down, OG still on the chase, wanting just a little bit more. The cherry on top is going to be the ogre for now. Beautiful goal, Ari. The patient man who's been looking for this the entire game finds a beautiful jump right there. Sets up with the back of the RRP. Catching the enemy, splitting them up as well. That's one of the powers about this. Like, you know, it's a bit of a meme RRP. But there's something to be said about disjointing the enemy team. Pushing the enemy into different positions and making it hard for them to help each other. Because Jarcopter went down without pipe being used. And Ooh. with the pipe, he could have lived. Yeah, no pipe, no sunder, no Aegis. You know, every, everything really timed to perfection there and played very well by OG to get that going. And finally, we see, you know, the concert of abilities that they've picked to play here. Every ulti used pretty much to perfection in a place where they had vision. They walked around the enemy vision into a nice bit of terrain that they could utilize. And they get to cross the land, you know, the line in the sand. They get to cross the river. Uh, they're starting to expand a little bit now, looking for more items. Going to be Glimmer Cape coming out for the Magnus. He doesn't have it yet, but building to his way towards it. Of course, Medusa getting stronger by the minute. Full Eye of Scotty now. Spooky Medusa. Yeah, a little bit concerning there. moment for gaming gladiators who have been in control of the game for so long. It could be awkward when you have a slow game like this and then suddenly you just lose your carry and that can take the the courage out of a team to take more fights but i think gaming gladiators need to take more fights they need to play on the cooldown uh of og try and force these big abilities and then fight when they're down because otherwise they get dragged into a tempo that really favors og so now we see them move go for some action here because now og are in this kind of rhythm where we're waiting for roshan all the og ulties are back up again I mean, the first point of contact here is going to be 23 Savage. Oh, the Stolen Aura! The reverse, reverse polarity right onto this Medusa, burning all of her mana, nearly bringing her down, but the mana style, the mana pop back up. 23 Savage is still alive, turning, slowing Watson down with the Scuddy. Supernova lands. Nine here, trying to back away from Ace and Quinn as they run forward, and Tofu straight back on top of 23 Savage. Rubik, he's got him! Does die for it, but the Medusa falls, and so will X Nova. Nine jumped on again by Quinn, a dominating streak for this Void Spirit. Gaming gladiators are poking and prodding, forcing OG to use their ultis kind of early there. Yeah, they forced out defensive ultis. They had to go and save their carry. It was definitely a panic moment for them as they try and go react to Medusa being caught out. And once those abilities are used, that gives uh, green lights for all of gaming gladiators to just overrun and overwhelm their opponents with the speed on the Terrorblade, Jarcopter, with the Bloodlust in there. They all just rush over their opponents. And also, this this Eggman, I feel bad for uh, 
for X Nova in this game. It's not easy to get off an egg that's not gonna get killed. Too much attack speed. Everyone's bloodlusted and yeah. demon zealed and whatever business going on. Yeah, he, he paid 14, uh, 1400 gold to get 100 attack speed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Get a full moon shard <laughs> worth of attack speed for 1400 gold. Oh, hello. Nearly at least. That's not an item we see a lot. Ooh. Albert on the Terror Blade. Yeah, it, it's very specifically designed to counter the Medusa. Halberd... Ace has always been a player who picks up Halberd, by the way. Uh, I've cast a lot of his games, and he always is uh, eyeing opportunities to use Halberd. It's not an item that he buys all the time, but he will look for the opportunity for it, and this is a great time. Medusa, being a ranged carry, suffers from the long duration. Against ranged heroes, 5 seconds duration Halberd can be pretty brutal. Um... And she doesn't want to buy a BKB as well. Yeah. Otherwise, the counter to Albert is to just press BKB. And you don't have the effect on you anymore. Or, you know, it's there, but it doesn't do anything. But since she doesn't want to buy it, that makes it a little bit awkward for her. She can get controlled now. Yeah, we had it in the qualifiers. Uh, no, in, in Dream League, right? There was, I don't, maybe it was an Enchantress or something. It was against the TA. I was like, oh, we did, we've not seen uh, yep. Halbert in a while. Specifically against these ranged carries, a nifty little pickup. We'll see if you can use it in this upcoming team fight, though, because OG are in the Roche pin, which has been scouted by a couple of TB illusions. 23 Savage, not too deterred by this, though, just stays in the pit, has Alacrity on him, and Roshan is slowly being whittled down. Again, Gladiators there in the back. Quinn starting to poke Whisper's visage. Watson on the left hand side trying to shuffle in. Through the little oh, chasm, the RP. Ari goes in it with the RRP. Jara caught out under the sun rain. Watson's just dead. Gaming gladiators are a rare misstep here. They try to maneuver into the Roche pit, still chasing 23 Savage, but Rubik has RP. He's looking for, for it. One. They're going for this Medusa, but she's got plenty of HP, plenty of mana left. X Nova's still alive somehow. We should finally die here. As Tofu does come in with the RRP. Visage the target. Down goes Whisper and Gaming Gladiators without their gyrocopter. Still cruising through this one. Ari's died to this terror blade of Ace. The big man from the offlane's coming in to play. A double kill is huge! Oh Who my god. Who needs a gyro when you've got a terror blade as your offlaner? Yeah, this Terrorblade is unironically stronger than the Gyrocopter anyway at this point. Even though he built a little bit awkward here uh, from a carry perspective, it's very effective. He's got evasion from the Elven Tunic, he's got tons of magic rest from the pipe, and he's got even more evasion coming in with the Halberd. He just doesn't die. This man does not die to anything on the side of OG right now. I think he can walk into the center of the team fight and just ask them what are you going to do. Pose the question. Yeah, I mean, stolen reverse, reverse polarity. Uh, it's pretty nice from Tofu to set it all up. But uh, yeah, Ace is just... Uh, he literally just walked it in. Okay, yeah. This is, this is what we've seen a lot lately, though. This is the recent trend. Terrorblade is a very annoying hero from the offlane. He doesn't really care about anything. And now he's going for the Octarine. This is also standard um, Octarine because he's very cooldown based. Nice thing about this is that you get lower cooldown for everything, right? He has three active items, all these spells as well. Higher uptime on Demon Seal. And now you, you sit there, you're OG, and you're like, well, we have Medusa, but we don't win late game. What do we do, guys? And this super slow lineup somehow has to activate and find a way to turn the game around. Very, very difficult times here for OG. Oh, he actually changed his mind. He sold the components for Doctorine. He's going heart next. Ace says, screw it. I want to live. <laughs> live forever. Something that Whisper is not able to do there is this Void Spirit just comes in and crushes the Visage with that freshly purchased Parasma. Big damage now. Has an Arcane Rune as well stored up for the next big fight. The word top did spot Ari coming in. So Tofu goes up. Lifts him. He tries to walk away from Tofu. Oh, hitches a ride. I don't think it's that easy. Walks right into the skewer to <laughs> try and skewer him <laughs> around. Uh, some drifting and blinking, jumping all around. But this has given time for Quinn to arrive. And while this is all... Well, Quinn, that's a twin gate. That's not the enemy hero. He was so, so hungry to move across the map quickly. 
And while that was happening, we also lost the Phoenix somewhere too. Gyrocopter just comes in and destroys X Nova. Yeah, I mean, OG were trying to stretch out on the map and start finding ways to to play the field. Nine is gonna find three bounty runes in the Radiant Jungle here. There's no Quinn. Okay, TP out from twenty three. I mean, when you Medusa is TPing out from a Void Spirit like that. That's, that's spooky. Yes, it's it's problematic. The Aegis Void Spirit doesn't really care, so it just attacks into a Medusa. And he's going for a BKB. I think Savage realized that the Halberd countered him too much last fight. And just said, okay, I have to get BKB. And I don't think he's wrong, but this does delay his big damage output. That was supposed to be a Daedalus. But it doesn't matter if you have a Daedalus if you can't auto-attack at all. And Terrorblade now with a full heart in his inventory. Going for Butterfly next. So it is this hybrid build. Offlane slash carry. It kind of looks like cheating seeing Terrorblade run around at 550 movement speed all the time. Like, why are you hasted? Why are you hasted? No, why is he hasted? You know? <laughs> what? It's got longer duration than haste rune even. I don't know, there's something busted about that. How is this hero allowed to be played in the off? Like, when it was position 5, it's like, haha, funny meme, Shadowblade, Dagon, you know, armlet, Sunder meme, whatever. Yeah, at, at least this it is, dies this easily. Yeah, this, is, least... this is real. <laughs> exactly. At least the Shadowblade armlet meme, you know, one mistake and you die. I think Ace could make a consecutive line of mistakes. He could make a generation of mistakes here, and, and he'll still be fine. I don't know how he dies. Whisper. Showed himself for a, a brief moment. And then he's gone. I mean, it's really, really like Patrick, the observer, is hovering over Tofu every second. Just like, Rubik, you know, picked into the Magnus. He's just proving such a pest. Stolen skewer, stolen reverse, reverse polarity, whatever. He's just a telekinesis. is irritating in his own right. Yeah. Tofu is playing a great game here. And, uh,. Watching the TB Illusion start sieging up high ground, I think Gaming Gladiator is starting to feel that this base looks pretty welcoming. Yeah, thank you very much. Say goodbye to your tier threes. OG, show us what you've got. The banner, living just barely, one HP out of 24. <laughs> and Quinn putting down a bunch of remnants. Making the approach quite difficult. I think he dodged that EMP with a nice dissimilate. 13 seconds on his uh, Aegis here. Timing out soon. I like that they're not even committed to the push. It's, TP is farming somewhere else and OG know he's farming somewhere else and still they can't deal with the push. Xnova desperately trying to farm <laughs> up a Lotus. And yeah, that, that illusion is just... Um, uh, you got a problem, man. You got a problem. A big problem here. Oh my god. Just imagine, you know, for a second, they're like, it's real, it's real. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, guys, I, I think it's real. We've been hitting it for 20 seconds. Oh no, that's an illusion. Oh no. <laughs> I for sure would have been blinking, skewering that, that TV illusion. So if it takes us 20 seconds oh, to over. kill an oh, illusion. Tofu's here. Has the Yules to cancel the TP? Not only are they pressuring your base and pushing forward across the river, they are uh, tracking back to kill off your phoenix who's trying to cut waves and be a nuisance. And he just wanted that lotus. He's very close to it. 350 gold to go on the phoenix, but not allowed to finish it there. And we Quinn. still... He's found Ari here. He's got the gem. Yep. Nine is nearby, but this is not a place or time for OG to fight. Tofu's still hunting. Maybe they can kill the Rubik here with nine turning on him. A Yule Scepter. And then the walk away from Tofu. Can he just get up to high ground and slip out of danger? No, he cannot. 23 Savage shuts it down. Terribly is thinking about going through the gate. He's coming. And Quinn getting tagged up, but he's got Manta to get out of the Orchid Silence. Gyrocopter sent skywards comes down from the tornado and Reverse, reverse polarity back in towards 23 Savage, who starts to open up the damage. Oh, but has got the satanic, the heal back up. 
off this Aghanim Scepter Daedalus. And now Quinn's back in onto the Medusa. Ace chasing on the left-hand side, just bullying Nine and Ari. Chasing right on top of this Invoker, but he's oh. out of mana now, the Terror Blade. I, I don't know if that matters a whole lot when he is literally unkillable. Tank is all hell. Celery will fall at long last to 23 Savage Medusa. But nine, Ari, out of mana. 23 Savage, not much left. And Gaming Gladiator is not, not giving chase, though. Kind of respecting OG in their retreat. 20, 23 is out of there with a TP. Uh, again, though, Whisper, I think, has been left alone. Yeah, he's not as mobile as the rest here. He is the slowest one of the bunch. And uh, he sped up his friends, you know. He popped the bongo boots and everyone else was like, thank you, we'll run away now. And suddenly he gets left behind. That looked like a good fight for OG for a long time. And it started out as one. But ultimately the Terrorblade, mana or no mana, he is a problem still. He also disassembled uh, the halberd to make the butterfly, by the way. So getting that a little bit earlier. He still has the recipe, so might go back for the halberd again. But he has queued up uh, a Yasha right now. I don't know if he will go S and Y with Manta style. Okay. Maybe he wants to uh, status rest. Yeah. It I mean, would be a double Yasha. Go but sand, right? <laughs> yeah. He could just sell the Sanja by like a Daedalus or something as well. He has a lot of options here. Um, we'll see what he ends up doing. He's had like all. He's already had so many evasion items, by the way. He has Aviana's feather, and he had Elven tunic earlier. He has, he's had four different evasion items this game. If we don't count the basic component, ridiculous. Roshan oh, gonna that. spawn in twenty-five here, so it's gonna be a bottom Rosh, and currently it's gaming gladiators with the firm control in the area. We're going to hit level 25 on this Gyro and TB, like, before Invoke is level 20, potentially. <laughs> Nine still at level 19. That's a big levels for the two cores on Gaming Gladiators. I, I just watched, like, two, man <laughs> two Medusa illusions and a ton of other things hitting a TB illusion. Oh, they're connecting with Void. Yeah, Quinn is in. He spots three of them, and he's basically just solo killing X Nova while being surrounded. Reverse, reverse polarities there onto the Void Spirit. Can they kill him off? The, yes, they can. 23 Savage with his BKB up has shredded the Void Spirit. Gets onto the Gyrocopter now, and Watson, he can't lifesteal through that. The Medusa's come into play, and Ace, even with all your evasion, you're still going to get stuck in the mud here. Hexed up and chased down with a brilliant skewer back from Ari into the Sunray, and 23 Savage able just to stand his ground, launch arrows out, and get the job done. Finally! Finally, OG can make it work. I'm actually... Very confused about this fight overall. It worked out for OG, but Gaming Gladiators, they were in control of the Roche pit. Roche was spawning in like 10 seconds, and they just run up and take a fight over on the outpost instead. So kind of serving this fight up to OG. OG make the most out of it, but now they're going to be the ones taking Roche. Come back? It's real? They're definitely fighting for it. This is an awkward game to read. And the Hex on the Invoker as well, he's getting pretty strong. One more item on him and he's looking pretty ready to take these fights as well. He needs the BKB to feel safe, but uh, Hex and Orchid, he definitely is posing a threat to the uh, the unkillable status that we've previously ascribed to some of the Gaming Gladiators heroes. Definitely being questioned. I de definitely one of those those weird ones where, you know, a, a greedy OG lineup with some hefty team fight did well in laning stage, then kind of had this stall moment where they, like you said, were waiting for items, waiting to be ready. Gaming Gladiators exploited that perfectly, got the, a bit of wind in their sails in the mid game, and it started to look like they were cruising. But now we're hitting this late game period when we've got this, you know, empowered up Medusa with Sunray onto this Magnus and Invoker. Invoker scaling pretty heavily as well. And Gaming Gladiators also with a pretty nice late game lineup themselves. Things are going to start getting spicy and, and we start to get into this situation where, you know, it's that classic bell curve thing of, you know, the noob in Dota is like, Vision lets me win team fights, and then the middle of the bell curve is like, no skill and button clicking is the best. We had to, to late game pro Dota, Vision wins you team fights. Yeah, who sees who first, it. who gets the jump? And uh, I think they also have something else now that can win you team fights. The Medusa just hit 25. 
taking the Tormentor and the Wisdom Rune here. He has the Split Shot Modifier talent, which is amazing. Both Daedalus, Eye of Skadi, and his uh, his facet as well, benefiting from this. It allows him to apply the, the 80 attack speed slow from the facet to everyone as well when it procs. Oh, wow. I'm not going to lie, I was getting ready to write OG off in this game. Same, I, I thought... You know, one more Aegis here for gaming gladiators, and they should be in a good position to just go high ground. They're still 10k gold ahead, and they're still looking very powerful. But OG are showing their team fight is very fierce. They have the double hex as well, with a hex on Visage, hex on Invoker, and Refresher Shard as well on Magnus. That's a whole lot of control coming out now. It is. Like, a gaming gladiator is. I think I saw TB trying to go back and rebuild the Halberd. And Gyro going for Sanjin Yasha. They're, they're trying to find ways to, like, new to the Medusa, try and deal with the big team fight that's coming their way. Well, you get every tool available to them. And 23 Savage back well, to defend his base. TB ended up going for the BKB in the end, so I think he felt the Hex last fight was too much. He, he doesn't want to get controlled by these Orchids and Hexes anymore. And Mana Burn. Like, he's getting mana burn, and then he, he literally can't do anything. Yeah, one like he, EMP. He actually relies on, like, spamming reflection and using Sunder and stuff like that. Oh, smoke coming out from both teams. And they found X Nova. A quick, simple pick there onto the Phoenix. And a jump from Quinn, but he's hexed up. They're turning on him with the RRP. Stolen? And the damage comes too quickly, but Tofu's in with a stolen one. Not quite fast enough to save Quinn's life. And it looks like Gaming Gladiators kind of considering re-entering this fight onto 23 Savage. But knowing he's got Aegis, not the best place to do it in the river. Yeah, we have a refreshed RRP ready as well. Medusa, very low mana. So it does still have the Aegis, but maybe they want to take that down. They're trying with these TB illusions and the reflection being very annoying. 23 Savage, stop hating yourself. <laughs> Dying to a freaking Medusa reflection. <laughs> Eh, looks like he wants to die at this point, just stepping into them. Use that Aegis up. Yeah. Where's Rubik? What's he got? The lift up. Telekinesis into Fire Blast for now. Reflection again, while Ari is on that top left-hand side, maybe looking for an entry point. But Ace is doing a very good job, skirting around the edges of the fight and keeping tabs on them all. Yeah, he's looking for Ari all the time. Look at him. Look how fast he is. BKB's up to make sure he doesn't get EMP burnt. On to nine, but the telekinesis is up, and the illusion basically just kills him without too much effort. Game of Gladiator has come back in, knowing the LTs are down, knowing that there's no real BKB play here from OG. Ari's TPing home, and that's left 23 Savage completely isolated. Whisper and X Nova trying to bail him out here, but Tofu again with that reverse reverse polarity is just going to bring the Medusa to her knees if she's got any. Whisper flapping his wings back into the base, and Tofu just keeps giving chase. Forced to turn into a stone gargoyle and maybe saved by Xnova's Sunray. But Game Gladiator is there on your ramp, pushing high ground into tier threes. Trying to kill off Whisper here through the Sunray is maybe a difficult task, but Ace and Watson diving past Terrible. the tier three tower. The Terror Blade sunders up the Gyrocopter there as Watson <laughs> charges forward with a Satanic ready. He starts live stealing up under tier fours, but he's dead. Wow. 23 Savage board back, clears out the Gyrocopter, holds onto the base, and a a chaotic, calamitous series of events here for both sides. That was a, a real brotherly sunder there onto the gyrocopter. What's happening? Uh, poor Jaro going forward with the satanic. Maybe he called it like, ah, I'm going to heal with the satanic, but difficult for him to do so. Should also be mentioned that satanic doesn't actually work to lifesteal against the Medusa as long as the mana shield is up. It's a very mm. problematic part of this game uh, in those critical moments is that you can't lifesteal off a of Medusa. Uh, because only 2% of the damage goes through, and that's all you life steal from. Goodness gracious me. I mean, OG with a, another a new lease on life, you know? But another chance. Yeah. Racks haven't fallen. Their base hasn't crumbled. They've won another team fight. Now, it's kind of just a matter of waiting for the green lights to pop back up. Somehow, somehow, despite all of Tofu's impact in that game as well, or in that fight as well, Two RRPs from him. Only one from the Refresher Magnus in the early part of the fights. Came in at the end there with the second one. But Rubik with the stolen spells cooldown ta uh, talent has 
been quite impactful. Oh. No buyback on a Medusa. I think that's probably the key thing here. 23 Savage steps up to the enemy high ground. Pretty quickly brings down the tier 3 tower. And he's starting to buy out his inventory, wanting to finish off the Aghanim's blessing. They're going to ah. slowly try and work down his mana pool. Yeah. They're trying here with Quinn. And tornado misses. And Quinn back in, but hexed up. Let's see if they can... Nah, through the Eon disc. Not an easy one to take. And Ari's missed the skewer onto him as well. Now, oh. Gaming Gladiators, this is their chance to charge forward and find something. TP out from 23 Savage. That's the important one. He's safe and sound. Ari is dead. As Gaming Gladiators will find him on the high ground. Stolen skewer. Look, look at Tofu is across the map already. Dear look at God. how fast. He's speedy. Blink four staff skewer forward. Wants to get to the enemy base. Medusa slowly slithering back home. Meanwhile, what, what's Nine up to? He's going for a wisdom rune? Yeah. He's got time to go and grab himself a little bit of wisdom here, but the push is coming. They're in your base. Knock, knock. Void Spirit yeah, with the just... Aeon Disc cooling down 20 seconds on it. I guess Ari doesn't want to buy back without ulti, right? No, not really. I mean, he, he's, his RP is the same time as his respawn, so it doesn't make sense to buy back anyway. They've let mid fall. No, no creep waves in the base, though. Backdoor regen apparently doesn't matter a whole lot, though, against gaming gladiators who just pummel down the tier 3. Oh, Metamorphs is terribly going to work. Yeah. The, the Melorex is a bit chunkier, though. has a lot of armor, so... Fortification. They're not actually going through this. Ah, they can't bring it down. They, they got the tower. That's good enough. A set of racks mid. I think OG pretty happy that's all they lose. Yeah, definitely happy not losing more when they don't have Magnus around. But they're going to immediately look for something themselves. They smoke out the Seated ter Terrorblade here. Hunting him. TB did get rid of his boots, by the way, so he has Octarine Core as well as his BKB now. And somebody's still running at 490 movement speed. What, what are your shoulder muscles called? Are they deltoids or...? Oh, you, you've got a lot of muscles there. Deltoids are some of them, yeah. yeah I'm just wondering if... Um, oh, Quinn. But he's, he's in on this Medusa. He does have that Eon disc yet again to kind of bail him out of... Danger as Watson and Ace approach from the right hand side. I was wondering if 23 Savage has been to the gym because he's <laughs> got the weight of the world on his shoulders at this point. Oh. Be all and end all. Terribly right, leading the way forward here. They're hunting nine. He's going into this trying to run away, but can they find him? The gem? Yeah, Quinn's got the gem. Sees the invoker, hexes him up. It looks like he's going to be able to take him down while 23 Savage tries to go to work on the gyro and ogre. Can't finish them off. Ace walks into the Medusa and trying to run away with a shockwave. Actually drags him back a little closer. He BKBs up. Reverse reverse polarity pushes him around. Installing He's him. still got Sunder ready though and they just cannot kill him off. MC Hammer, the Terrorblade over here, cannot touch this. He turns and slays Whisper. Infinite evasion from the Terrorblade. Keeps him alive. Three die on OG. Two have buyback. And again, like silver lining, you keep the Medusa alive, but... Gaming Gladiators just have so much more gas left in the tank. All of this happening, and we go back to how the draft started. It's Rubik and Magnus get that RP and the impact coming out from the Rubik. Also, they can't deal with these split-up fights on the side of OG. They're getting kited into all these weird positions, and Medusa just wants to fight people, but everyone runs away from her. Oh, here's a Quinn and Tofu again, playing forward onto the Phoenix. Kills off X Nova. A again, you've got Magnus and Phoenix buyback available. But you are losing that bottom lane no matter what happens. Yeah, top lane too terribly is there. And he's hexed up. Damage is coming pretty quickly onto him, but pops the Manta. Runs away from the Medusa. Oh, the lift up and save as well. Keeps him out of danger. As that final barracks, it looks like it's going to fall to Watson. Ari, 9, and 23 Savage skewer back into the waiting arms of the Invoker, but Watson's got BKB Satanic. Stays alive a little bit longer, turning and fighting 23, as the stolen RRP again comes in from Tofu, but can't save the Gyro. They've got the buildings, but they've got to run away now, Gaming Gladiators. 23 Savage is too strong holding this high ground. 
I'll dive around with the Phoenix Quinn back in onto the Medusa. The mana pool's pretty low here. The Deafening Blast doesn't save oh, her no. and she's dead for two minutes. That might just be it. Gyro buys back. OG without their carry. They've got to know that it's lights out momentarily for them as the Invoker's slain, taken down by Ace. This offlane Terrorblade has been absolutely spectacular for Gaming Gladiators here. And Watson returns to finish off the buildings. Tier 4 towers falling. The throne soon to be exposed and GG called. GG finally after a long struggle here. Gaming Gladiators close out, you know, the game in what should have been OG's comfort timing. They wanted to go late. They wanted to drag this out. They wanted to play it slow. But ultimately, Gaming Gladiators say, you know what? Are off in this draft. I'm, I'm again kind of leading Gaming Gladiators. I don't know if I'm just being, you know, recency biased. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, I'm a little bit recency biased in the fact that I think Gaming Gladiators are the more uh, expected team to win here. They're very, yeah. very uh, confident going into this matchup. But draft-wise, if I didn't see the team names, I would enjoy OG's draft quite a bit. I think it's okay. got good ideas. Um, yeah, good catch, good magic damage, a lot of nukes. Yeah, uh, I like their... It's a very stable draft. Where's oh. this? Deny? Oh. Deny the ward? Nah, Celery got it. Damn, they timed that one. Celery with no items. Yep. He just ran out. I don't know. He's saving for something, I suppose. He's got everything coming on the courier now, I think. I think I think you're right. He just ran out, right? Smoked up with obs and sentries. Yeah. Like, I'm getting there first. Yeah. Just rushing. Rushing quickly. Didn't do the, bo uh, the boots selling strat with uh, buying boots and then sending them home and selling them mm. for even more speed. Well, learning curve ogre. Right, that's what I wanted to check. What was ogre's actual ogre magi? So he was 18 and 7, 72% win rate. And I think oh, the wow. stat I was thinking of was 14 of those of those were like learning curve and he was right. like 12 and 2 with learning curve, something like that. It was ridiculously high. Yeah. But, yeah, learning curve is strong. It's it, very good, but it's it, not it strong die. enough to learn a way not to die here. Nope. Learn how to path to the bottom lane. Learn how to avoid gaming gladiators who draw first blood for Quinn in that mid spot. Yeah, learning how to feed a real hero. Pango's going to be very happy with this. Immediately getting out the bottle. Off to a great start for him. We see a support battle. It's intense. Who's going to win? Ooh, blood grenade and dodges the blast. Hang on. Huh? He's got fairy fire. Okay, yeah. he drops the blood grenade too. Efficiency, extra HP. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I forget sometimes the blood grenade gives you HP. Like dropping it to, <laughs> dropping a blood grenade to use fire. I don't think I've ever seen someone use <laughs> backpacking their HP? blood grenade. Yeah, 50. 50 per stack and you can have multiple in a stack. And how many can you stack? Is it two? Uh, Three, I believe. Three. Not bad, not bad. I don't think I've ever... I ever see people run around with multiple either. It's uh it's a high you know, highly sought after commodity in the early game. Oh. People just use those. You know what we need? We need to bring back the mango tree, except it's blood grenades. A bloody grenade a blood tree. Imagine you got a blood grenade tree, dude. Damn. You just <gasps> come home to so base and see like... ten of those bad boys, and you're like, oh yeah. Yes. That's a great idea. I love it. <laughs> Valve, if you're listening, that's what I want. I don't care if it's imbalanced. I just want blood grenades nonstop. Everyone's got like plus 300 HP from having six blood grenades stacked in their inventory. Such a funny anyway. item. The fact that when you use it, you lose HP yourself and you deal damage to your opponent. I really like the design of it. Yeah. yeah I love it. Well, Pango and Medusa having a pretty good start to this one. 11, 4, and 10 one on their CS, while the Gyro and Puck, their respective counterparts, oh, yeah, about a half of that value, not having the best of times. Yeah. Ace struggling a little bit to catch up to the other uh, counterparts here, CS-wise, but he got a few good denies, and he has creeps coming in. Next now we're going to chuck some spells over at Ace. And try and keep 23 Savage farming here with a bit of a half pull into that large camp. Yeah, the flat cannon dealing whatever damage it can, along with the ignite. This is going to be at a lane where they have a lot of like slow damage just coming out from the side of Radiant. And there it is. 
Ace is going to have to enjoy taking damage bit by bit. Now, this is where you said that Ace kind of wants to be in front of his tower, right? Yeah, it wants to be as close as possible to the tower, but at the same time, they need to be in a position to contest these camps um, mm. because now the Ogre stacks up his small camp. So he's prepared to do a double pull or a stacked pull on the small. Lane is starting out very well for Radiant. Okay, I'm going nice, like, in that mid lane. I mean, it's Quinn on Pango, but my goodness. Give Nine a, a breath of air or something. Like, 12 and 1 against 22 and 5? Yeah, he's, is he's it meant definitely to be like winning. this? He's definitely winning. I think Pango is very favored in the lane. Later on, it's annoying with the ulti and whatnot. But laning-wise, yeah. uh, Pango can't really juke anything against... Uh, or, sorry, Puck can't really juke anything against Pango. There's nothing to trigger the the puckish uh, innate, so the right. only thing you can do is run under tower and try and disjoint some tower attacks. But Pango's abilities do not get disjointed, and Pango is a melee hero, so True. you're losing out a lot of value as puck leaning against this. It's like go jungle and hope there's like a range satyr or something. <laughs> yeah, something to heal up. He's gonna look for a tower to get some shot in, perhaps. Uh, try and grab those water runes where he can as well. My Gyrocopter taking a lot of damage bottom. They've stepped up on 23 Savage here with Tofu and Ace. Chasing this Gyro down. They've got a Breathe Fire at level 2, but the dead shot misses. Tofu, a rare miss there. The next Nova is going to walk across and maybe even look for a kill. Ignite. And a few punches. Oh, Tofu's he's got 12 wand. Fairy Fire, not fast enough to use it. Just gets stunned and killed. Yeah, just X Nova bringing the brute method of uh, bashing him down there, and that somehow works out in their favor. I thought Twenty Three Savage was gonna die for sure. He's back on the tower, gets past two tangles, gonna heal up a little bit here. Still very low HP though, so he's sending out a salve, I believe. Or no, he actually isn't. His courier just arrived, so that does mean that he might be a, an initial target here when they come back to the lane. Some stacks being built up as well. Yeah, a lot of stacks. Nine made some stacks for himself as well on the mid lane there. Preparing jungle as uh, the mid lane is not the, too easy against Pango. His lane up top's funny as well. Hoodwig and Pugna are both very good trading heroes. Just constantly clicking each other, skirting back and forth, both pretty quick and hiding in the trees. Having a battle over the small camp and the, the jungle up north. Yeah, they're both good, but Ari is winning the trade a little bit, and that allows him to sneak in here and put some deep vision, keeping yeah. tabs on Watson farming. Looking to maybe steal something, or at least just leech the experience. Yeah, because the Pugna's made the long walk back to base. All the way home. Ari comes in to try and, yeah, steal a couple, get a bit of chip damage onto Watson. Well, so annoying. He just, just keeps like... auto-attacking the creeps. Mid lane. Tofu's walked in here. Arcane Rune was there for Quinn. Tofu pops the one to try and stay alive, but it looks like he's about to die to nine. Finished off and killed while Quinn does go in with a rolling thunder, looking for X Nova, but pushes him to low ground. In the meantime, oh. Whispers killed Watson up at top. But this little roll and play in the river. X Nova gets surrounded by Celery and Quinn, but the stuns. Oh, they've got the damage. No oh. further lockdown. A, a nice attempt by X Nova to TP. Yeah, well, also oh, nice attempt. going on there, Waka. Uh, also nice attempt by him just hugging the tree line there, making sure that he uh, would get pushed up to the high ground again by the pango if he got knocked. So, kind of mind gaming, but Pagna coming in and helping does make sure that he dies. And then with the Pugna leaving that top lane, Manusa dead to the Doom. And that's not even with an ultimate, right? That's just Doom and Hoodwink. Uh, Ari was setting up on him for quite a while and dealing some chip damage, so it was quite easy to bring him down with all the harassment he took already. And now yeah, Doom level 6 on the back of that. With a mana burn creep as well. Yeah, very, very high damage against Medusa to spam that mana burn. Oh, the lightning stage breaking down. This is usually around the time when we see these gyros kind of go through Twin Gate, make a play into the opposing safe lane. 23 Savage... Yeah, yeah. There, there we go. There you is. called it. <laughs> you, you know what he's going to do. But also, they already have the Observer Ward, of course. So they know this rotation is coming. And Medusa already wisely farming back and away into her deep jungle. 
It's like, if I can read that move, <laughs> exactly. <anyone> can. <laughs> exactly. Watson also is sensing this rotation coming out. And that's exactly what's going on. Oh, nine. Uh, Taking a yeah. lot of damage. That's an awkward pause. Right as this was buckle. I was going to say, Nine was just stood there not doing anything for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awkward. That's an awkward uh, moment for sure. Quinn, Quinn is... Uh, Lying down? Mid-slice here. <laughs> Draw me like one of your Damn. French girls. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Pangolier? Don't... Oh, that, that is such good sportsmanship, honestly. Yeah. If yeah, you I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, it became apparent that nine just, yeah, wasn't there. Yeah, he he already got so much damage. His Unlucky. Is victory. He's reconnecting now, so he'll get back in. Should be uh, alive to his rush buckle, and uh, we'll see. Quinn might just let him live then and walk away since yeah. this was not really meant to go down. He had Illusor or the entire time on nine could have left whenever he wanted to yeah, have jesus to oh, i mean that was, <laughs> wasn't yeah. far off from dying yeah it was literally like 10 hp there jeez but yeah he true to his word he did leave him he could have chased him with a pango ulti so good boy, actually boy. a good good showman of uh sportsmanship and then back to normality Radiant Scan understands Gaming Gladiators are down in that bottom jungle. Max Nova comes across trying to find out if they placed any vision, which they haven't. And the walk down to that bottom tier one, it looks like here with Quint and Tofu wanting to get some use out of the Rolling Thunder and eyeing up 23 Savage. Gyrocopter could be a juicy kill for them here. Nice dodge by 23 to get away from the first Rolling Thunder hit. But inside the calling and the bounces landing from Quinn, he's stuck on the ramp and it's a little <laughs> bit awkward now from the Pango. Ace has come in though to help secure this, it looks like, with the breathe fire just enough to take him even through the raindrops. Oh my god, Dragonite with a solo kill. Just a breathe fire. <laughs> How easy to bring down the enemy what carry. A sick outplay, man. Wait, Ace did the same thing last game with a reflection. He did. <laughs> this is this is a pattern now, Ace. <laughs> Just Oh, sorry guys, I'm a little bit late. I'm a bit late to this gank. Yeah. Oh well, I can help now. Like guys, stop picking me such slow heroes. Like I've got to buy a shard on Terrorblade to catch up to you. Like, I'm gonna buy Blink on DK. Sneaky man, sneaky. Pretends to be such a nice guy, but he really just wants to last it. Oh, currently dead even. Three to three. Less than one K lead. Gaming Gladiator is it still feels like they're the ones who are making things happen, kind of pressing forward into enemy territory, getting on top of people, these kind of ganks and team fights. And OG, uh, a, a big shift from the old OG, right? Where they were always the team diving towers, making stuff happen. And this OG feels very reactive in this series. Yeah, they are. And partly I would say that is maybe because of 23 Savage and his playstyle. He's mm. not a sacrificial carry. He is a traditional hard carry type player. He wants to farm, he wants to get big. He did make a move there with the gate earlier, but uh, other than that, we haven't seen him really open up. He hasn't been part of any kill yet. And of course, last game with the Medusa, you know, doesn't get much more hard carry than that. And OG putting some focus on that top lane with a couple of obs and sentries. And a guard up the northern jungle. Max Nova, a bit of vision down in the southern one now. So a bit of cover there for the gyrocopter to tuck in farm camps. And then you know, we, we start to get into this period where we consider heading to Ancients. as 23 Savage in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, you, you want to upgrade his farming area. Because bottom lane is not looking too comfortable. The Dragonite is being oppressive. Uh, shoving the lane in. They are gonna just trade farm. DK says, okay, I killed your creep wave. I'm gonna run in jungle a little bit. He has his mage slayer coming out uh, on the Dragonite, so he'll be ready to get involved. Speaking of which, we have a smoke coming out with a doom going through the gate. They're looking for a Dragonite. Might be in time to get him on this camp. Oh, it's a little bit too late. The Wandering Whisper. Oh, Ace. He's moving back towards the small camp. He, want, he wanted a little bit more. A little greedy from the Dragon Knight, so he gets doomed up. Ari, Bushwhack, and Infernal Blade from Whisper. But now in comes Quinn and Tofu. 
So they've saved the Dragon Knight. They've turned onto Whisper's Doom. They're going to have to try and escape from the call down and the damage landing out of the gyrocopter. But Watson, an additional force arriving in as nine jumps in, aggressive from Puck, and he'll die for it. Yeah, all five so quickly from both teams here. Great read and reaction by Gaming Gladiators. Quickly there with the Pango ulti. Sort of going through the enemy team and also defending his, uh, defending his friend. And that's Doom on cooldown, so resources spent by OG. Sure, you used your role, but Doom is the longer cooldown that you care about. And that opens up an opportunity now. Siege up mid. Pugna has a lot of points in the blast, maxed out. That's got to feel so good for Gaming Gladiators, right? Like, like all the things you said, and then the fact that Medusa joins the fight, gets involved, and is next to the Ancients to continue farming. And oh, then yeah. the rest of the team just like walks down mid and says, We've got a Pugna with Blast to hit this tower. Yeah, she didn't have to walk very far away from her farming grounds, whereas OG, they did bring all five of their heroes to that area, and then they had to disperse back onto top lane. Uh, so more time was invested for them. And all those small things add up, man. Ogre <laughs> showing some resilience in defending his tier 1 tower. The Ignite does some damage, but uh, Ace doesn't care too much. Here comes Ari with a bushwhack and a sharpshooter. Life Drain is there. <laughs> They'll blow up the Pugna first. Get rid of that heal on the DK. But Quinn, another good rolling thunder there to connect onto the Ogre and turn back and trade. So tower down. Support for support. Time to retreat, though, for Gaming Gladiators as they've spent their big team fight ulti. I'm trying to back Quick. away from OG, who were setting up to move. Quick quelling lay there from Watson, cutting out the Hoodwing tree as well, cutting the Dragon Knight free before he even got stuck, basically, from the bush bushwhack. I thought it was Dragon Knight doing it, but he doesn't have a quelling blade, so. Oh, you're Watson. Right. Watson, very heads up. Yeah, I. I, 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 I didn't sure even see the bushwhack game, barely. Like, it just disappeared. <laughs> I saw the tree. The tree went. Yeah. I thought it was a DK, but he didn't. Yeah, I guess he didn't even turn around. Oh, that's good. On the money. Gotta have friends looking out for you like that. Wisdom runes are spawning, and neither team looks to be in a position to contest and steal. So, Nine is gonna refill his bottle using the the radiant wisdom rune. But that means it's not power like a hard rune. game for Nine. Like he was last pick, right? Yeah. Oh, um. Challenging. Yeah, it's. It's a little bit tough playing Puck Puck versus the Pango, I think. The matchup is awkward. Lane matchup is not as easy as you might think. And then playing into a DK with that stun can be annoying too. Yeah, we haven't really gotten to the point where that becomes annoying. Like, the Blink Dagger is coming up soon. He has it actually flying out now for Dragonite. Yeah. So, with the Blink in hand, this is where Puck starts to be at risk. Yeah, I guess it's also like three very tanky cores that the Puck can't like solo kill or finish off with just a little bit of help. It's just Puck has to aim Pugna and we're out to this game. Yeah, he, catch up. he relies a lot on the flow of the fight overall. Like Puck is great for going in the back line. The Pugna and the and Murta are great targets, but he doesn't have enough damage on his own. This Observer Ward. Does not see Savage. He's hiding in a good spot behind the cliff. X Nova not too far behind him. Yeah. He oh, always wants spot. to stay nearby and keep spamming this Bloodlust on him, ramp up his farming speed. But we do see a lot of gaming gladiators down here looking for anything they can get down here. If they can push the lane, Pugna can start blasting. And they've had a lot of time up top here for nine on this puck and whispers doom to get some farm it looks like that comfort is going to come to an end quinn speeding all the way across onto the doom and the tps from gaming gladiators make that five-man move to kill him off there's something very satisfying about watching the pangle get faster and faster with the with thunderbolt facets yes. the rolling speed increasing is i don't know uh, things go fast. I smile. Acceleration. Yeah, very good to reach people far away like that. This does buy some time for his team on the side of Doom, though. Puck working towards the Blink Dagger. Maybe with that Blink and with the BKB coming up in Doom soon, they will start making some moves. 
We do also have BKB being built early by Gyrocopter, so they will hit a strong timing on OG. Not too far away from now, like two minutes from now, they will be ready. Does that Thunderbolt actually say how fast? What are the numbers? Um, I don't fully understand it, but I think it maxes out at 665. What is Whisper right? just dead again? Ooh, it looks like he's tanky enough with Wand and Lotus still to play with here. Even turning to kill off the Pugna Ward as it's OG's turn to react and return fire. Kill off Celery. Uh, an eager move from Gaming Gladiators, but without the Pango, the Rolling Thunder was missing. They can't kill the Doom. Yeah, a little bit too close to the tower as well to keep fighting. Uh, dangerous play to try and get a pick off. But Doom survives, gets himself to BKB, so he has that coming out now, I believe. Should be on his courier, yeah. I think stun on the Ogre. Quickly dispatch with X Nova. Yeah, Ogre dies, but you don't really care too much about an Ogre. It's an Ogre. Ari, however, has to be careful not to be a, a follow-up feed. Respect the defusal on the Pango. Timings are coming in, so we have BKB Doom, BKB Gyrocopter, and Blink on Puck. All three cores on OG just got some power spikes hit. Meanwhile, on the side of Dire, Pango is going towards uh, an Aghanim Scepter next, but it's a long way until there. He's about halfway there. Such a big item, though. Oh, <laughs> denied shield rune. Tofu right under the nose of Whisper. And OG kind of bunkering around their Ancients area, protecting 23 Savage as he gets himself towards the Aghanim Scepter. But it also looks like he's wanting... Yeah, he's been managing against Medusa. Shift into Diffusal Blade. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, just a good item to add. And I think I like this order of purchase better from Savage than what we saw in the previous game. Um, oh, blinked on by Dragonites. Just a harass, really, though. The two of them can't really burst him. It's like, can we elicit a response from OG? You know, blinks on a gyro. How many, how many termites are going to come out of the woodwork to come and save their queen? It looks like yeah. Whisper here. That's a big termite. It is. The big, angry warrior ant, or whoever he might be, with nine chasing celery up to the north. Should be able to kill off the pugna at the very least. Even ooh, having to use the coil. Stop him in his tracks. Yeah, nice pick off, but Dragonite does stay alive, backs out, and keeps farming. So, not the biggest pick offs. Very uh, calm and sort of tentative game. Fight come out yet. Whisper still looking for a chance to use his Doom. He is under a ward, so not gonna find anyone right now. Meanwhile, Savage just dragging creep waves, farming in jungle, being efficient, making the most out of this sort of slow game. And then the rolling thunder. With oh, oh look, there's a Medusa in this game. <laughs> Watson's like, yeah, I'm near my ancients. I'll come and join. It's only a thousand range away from my little holiday home. Yeah, nice kill there. Uh, I, he held his BKB on Doom though, because he just got hit by the Pango roll and then got rooted by Medusa. He could have popped off the BKB there for a little while, but didn't choose to do it. Maybe he thought he would die no matter what. I'm not too sure. I mean, e either way, that ward you pointed out. Saw him coming. Yeah, he's playing like, on division. That's why you gotta do. Play where you're strong and where you can see your opponents. Right now, it feels like OG are not really enjoying as much map space. So they're falling behind, trailing a net worth 6,000 lead for G gaming gladiators. And it's rapidly building. Again, a smoke. Yeah. They want to get a use of this Doom. Also a little bit of a sad timing because he's just 60 experience away from level 2 Doom. It's going to be a level 1 ulti yeah, coming like, from him. It's like the call has come for 9 to catch up and 9 has soaked up a lot of the farm that the Doom would usually get. We saw them right up in that top jungle area kind of farming together, Puck taking the last hits. And then Doom has fallen behind. And now Whisper's the one that has been trying to be aggressive and you know, looking for moves to make, but... If you don't connect on them, then you're behind. Your puck is, yes, catching up, but still looking kind of sad. I was wondering who was leaving flowers on the ground, but it's Hoodwink. Oh, Murta, dead up top. Shortly, anyway. Potentially. Really? 
You're going to die in fountain. That's so spiteful to just send out the doom there. He's like, nah, you're not getting away like this. It was a very nice play by Tofu and forced the Doom ulti usage to uh, bring him down. This now gives a timing for them. They have all their ultis ready on the side of Game Gladiators. They can make a move. Even have BKB on the Dragonite as well now. They pretty immediately smoke up and play alongside this Medusa. A very tanky DK makes the jump onto the Hoodwink. Roll up from Quinn. Thinking about going in, but doesn't actually use the Rolling Thunder. And Hoodwink actually escapes. Yeah, surprisingly, I, I blinked and I thought she was dead. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly lived there. I think the the innate kicked in and gave her a little bit of extra lives there. The redirect chance. 20% chance to redirect damage. The big dragon just shooting fireballs at trees because he can't land on the squirrel. <laughs> squirrel scuttering around. It's even weirder when you melee. You're like standing right next to her and the trees are dying instead. Like, why can't I hit her? At first I thought it was only ranged attacks that would be redirected, but oh. it does work against melee. Like Bugs Bunny or like some kind of Looney Tunes character, you know, when they're dodging sword attacks and their whole body bends like a C. Or it becomes a curve. She just ducks under the swing. Uh, can't hit me. Big old oh. haymakers. Even if Gaming Gladiators couldn't get the team fight they wanted, They've got the objective here in Roshan. Yep, they get the bigger price. Um, Age is not going to be contested. Meanwhile, Doom tried to get cheeky top. Might be paying for it. In comes Quint and Tofu here with a run of HRs and the final hits. Land on to Whisper. 9, 23, and X Nova now trying to run away because Quinn's coming in pretty hot with that Rolling Thunder. Crashing onto the Ogre. X Nova is going to be the bonus kill here for them. Well, Ace says that's not enough. He's running forward to the south, and Nine looks like he was being chased by Quinn. But no yeah. way to get on top of him. And Ace just invading and stealing away some Ancients, and they push top, take the tier one. Quinn quickly getting some tower advantage. They are split pushing on the sides. OG are trying to do what they can. Ari pushing bottom, Puck pushing top. But at the same time, it feels inevitable that they're falling behind more and more here. And they even hunting after the split push of nine. Dragon Knight and Murta definitely have enough to kill him. There's the blink stun. Ooh, the science Into is off the, the mark though. Ooh, phase shift. Blink away from nine. Gets up to the top of the map and orbs away with TP ready. Yeah, he, he placed the silence, but was a little bit awkward. It didn't have the ghost in the right location the way he placed it. Similar to like yeah, but... trying to put down a Bramble Mace when you play uh, Willow, putting down the the calling when you play Murta. Gotta make sure you aim it correctly. But you just didn't have the time or the the positioning for it. Yeah, not quite on the mark. And OG kind of using that time to take the Tormentor, get a little bit going for themselves. Did you see what Still... Watson added, by the way? That's his third item. I really like oh. this choice. Ooh. So he chose to go for Orchid in this game. Well, OG. Or mid. And making a move on to Ace. BKB for BKB. Whisper. <laughs> Fake pumps the Doom. He's not going to chuck it at him this time. <laughs> ah, not going to use it because there's no way that he's going to die. Ace way too tanky. But this gives them an opportunity to go on the bottom. Yeah, they smoke back up and try and return fire onto Tofu. Straight up dooming them Muerta. In comes the Rolling Thunder from Quinn, though, to the back lines on the Puck and the Ogre. Causing some issues there. They've lost Tofu, but Puck's the trade. That's big for Gaming Gladiators, as X Nova's left stranded by his Hoodwink and Doom. They're running and bailing to the left-hand side, and Gaming Gladiators clean up, go back to Killing Tower. Nine got a little bit too close to Watson, and that Orchid on Medusa, we were talking about it before the fight, it comes in, silences him, and he just goes down. You don't have a dispel down? item. Well, Ace? So Ace um, TP'd out of mid lane, then ran down mid lane and died there anyway. Listen, yeah, I don't know why he's doing mid again, but maybe he, he's being summoned to mid. Some some uh, some unknown powers are drawing this man towards him mid. In. Yeah. <laughs> Hidden Naga in the game. She's there. She's so damn strong, she pulls him even though she's not in the game. Yep. Well, that was a tier 3. Yeah, so it was. They took the tier 3 and quickly out... No desire to stay around. Pugna blasts a little bit here. Might stay for a while longer. 
cheeky salary. <laughs> Should ultimately probably back away as the rest of his team are on the map and showing on top. I mean, Gyro and Doom are suffering some difficulties here against the Pango and the Muerta. 23 Savage has to BKB TP to get out of there. So many BKB TPs this game. I thought we'd, we'd have <laughs> enough of that from the last series. <laughs> yeah, he would be proud. He would be proud for oh, sure. The dodge on the Atos, the Glimmer Cape into the Invis and Celery. Oh, he's walked into X Nova. Puts down the Nether Wall, decreps himself. In comes Ace onto the Hoodwink. Sharpshooter off the mark. Pugna juking and jiving all over the place with another Glimmer to go. He's dodged away from a lot of danger, but he's eventually going to die. But a, a trade out of nothing. Let's see if Ace can survive, because the Dragon Knight is being run at by this Doom and Pug. The rest of the game in Gladiator is coming in from the north. Nine poking again with a blink and the jaunt. Gets away from them, but OG still don't feel comfortable. Yeah, definitely. And now they're in a weird spot. They're behind as the creep waves are coming in. There's already a creep wave mid. They're cutting next wave, but they could just go. They already have a creep wave mid, so the barracks are open. No back to protection. G-O-H-G. Up we go for the barracks. The backstab is coming, but they know it's there. So Ace going first towards it. Smoke break. Calling used. Quinn with the rolling thunder. Stunning up the gyrocopter straight up onto 23 Savage. A lot of damage comes his way and he's dead before he can use a single bloody thing. A double kill for Watson. Medusa emerging victorious in this fight as Whisper charging it onto this Dragon Knight might be able to bring him down. The Doom... Last a little while longer. Back in Fountain, he's dropping lower and lower. Oh, he's Whisper fine. survives, but the Dragonite's alive. He survived it. Whisper's died. Three gone, four gone from OG. The Pug came into the fight and immediately dispatched with by Watson. Yeah, the, the Orchids, now a Bloodthorn, even worse. More damage coming out. Puck has queued up the Yule Scepter, is trying to get one, but doesn't have enough gold yet. And that Parasma, maybe it was too much of a commitment. It's a big, heavy item before getting a safety item. This is twice now, or three times already, the Orchid has really done him in. And straight onto the second lane of Barracks, forcing the Glyph. Watson just repositions quickly to cut out that bottom wave. Tier 3 dead and the barracks soon to follow with a double damage rune here on Quinn. Dear God, he shoots fast on Watson. Look at that attack speed. The Bloodthorn plus Butterfly is already such disturbing attack speed. He's shooting more than... He was at 0 0.31, so more than 3 hits per second. Now it's 0 0.34. It's like one of those A10 Warthogs just coming in with a massive minigun in it. Just <laughs> yeah. Laying down some serious covering fire. Uh, third lane of barracks. Not long for this world, honestly. The way the game and gladiators are going. Yeah, no, they're going in with the roll. There we go on to Whisper. Quinn, the second connection. Nine tries to jump into the back with a three-man coil. He's he's held them away. Quinn, though, back on towards 23 Savage to force the BKB quite early on. And the gyrocopter, even from the high ground here, struggling just to kill off a celery pugna. They got the takedown on him, but they're going to lose so much for it. 23 Savage is dead with no buyback, so Gyrocopter's out of here. Nine is stuck behind enemy lines, scouted, and might just get blink stunned if the Dragonite can find the line. Well, Nine gets back to Fountain, but this, this leave Watson now. Full HP, full mana, just to sit here and hit buildings. Yeah, we haven't even seen Pugna really come into play and start healing the, the Medusa. She never really feels threatened in these fights. And I don't see how they can stop this Mega Creeps. 44 seconds. This is going to be more than Megas. They're going to go for the throne as well. No reason to stop. OG. They're scratching their heads. They're like, what can we do? How do you stop the snake lady in this patch? I I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, they tried to play it in game one. Yeah. Now they're suffering against it in game two. She has a dateless now as well. Dear God, the damage is here. And it looks like it's time for... OG to have like one last ditch fight? Jump uh, 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 nine jumps in and just dies. Yeah. H O T T O G O down to the lower bracket, I think, is the way they're gonna go. Yeah, this is uh this is just fountain farming time now for Watson hopping in. That orchid purchase was just such a good 
uh, Stroke of Genius, honestly, I don't see a lot of uh, Medusas choose that into their item build. But Bloodthorn is a very good carry item still, and it just hard countered exactly the one hero that OG relied on. The puck Perfect. needed to have some action, needed to have some some clutch play 